to another sustaining it video. Hi, Dave here from Sustaining Geek. Here I am on my turbo trainer in the garage, door open, freezing cold outside, but you know how hot it gets and I'm always just put me along. Anyway, enough of my excuses. Whole purpose of this video and thanks as much for tuning in. Keep with us, it's about the Elite Riser. Just some quick shots of the Riser here in action. Well, still in action, just showing how well used it is. Other reviewers have the benefit of getting something in, turning it round for review very quickly and getting their thoughts out. But we have the benefit of having long-term reviews where we have the kit for a longer time um, because we've got other things in our lives, clearly. And what that means is we find the foibles. So by riding by over an hour a day indoors every day, we find these little things out on multiple platforms as well. So the Elite Riser is particularly good, first of all, on Zwift. The reason being, if you use it on Zwift, you have steering as well as elevation and descending. So it goes up as much as 20% and it goes down as much as 10%. And before, <laughs> you're probably thinking, does it have a temperature like this? Normally, I go further down. <laughs> so this is the door and this is when you're almost two meters tall as well. Anyway. This is the S's. I'm doing the KO in reverse here purely because it quickly gets you on the course. If you look at my shoulders, I'm using the riser, obviously. You can, should be able to see my shoulders rising and falling. That was a very big one because I was in the wrong gear. Uh, and this gives you fully immersive fun. So this and Sand and Sequelias are great courses to use. Now, as you can see here, we have our bike attached to an Elite Dirito X. It's your Elite Dirito X attached to the riser on the front, which is all very good because that means they connect together rather wonderfully via the riser app. In the background, you can see what we have there is a Kurt Kinetic turbo trainer. We tried it in theory, uh, if you've got an amp plus turbo, it can connect to this. And so therefore you get that connectivity when you put the slider to 100% on Zwift, for example, you get 100% slope. And therefore, if it goes up by 20%, this goes up by 20%. If you put your slope at 50%, then you get 50% of the slope. Anyway, it didn't work with the Kurt Kinetic. So that didn't work, Dorito X. So I've heard of people getting a decent effect on the Neo. Can't comment because I haven't checked. And clearly in the background just there, we have one of my all-time favourites, which is the Neo, which is an interactive power meter on set of rollers uh, by Elite. Clearly you wouldn't put, <laughs> you wouldn't put this device on, uh, on here because... <laughs> you fall off your rollers. Anyway, that's, a, that's another thing. But yeah, Dorito Elite Turbo Trainer on the back. And you've got the riser on the front. Yeah, so the Elite Riser, it's to give you an immersive experience when you're riding indoors. So when you're climbing, you're going up climbs, your bike goes up at the front, so it feels more like you're riding uphill outside. And when you go down, the opposite. And also so you can turn, which does have its advantages uh, on some courses. And this is me turning the bars. So the important thing with having the Elite Turbo Training at the other end, it has got some movement in it, which helps with the frame. You can see the steering here. You can see how the fork dropouts fit in. This will fit virtually any type of bike as well. So it comes with all the adapters, as I've probably already mentioned. So just a few different shots here of me steering in different ways. So moving around the course. So of course, if you're on Zwift, as you know, and you have steering, it does help in some ways and doesn't help in others but one thing it does a hundred percent switch your brain on and you can ride for longer because you're just more interested so and also to be totally honest if those of you use the Sturzio which we've got on the shelf here and it depends how skillful you are uh, you can get a worse result if you're racing with steering and you're not using it properly so more like a more real experience because there are more factors to consider and it keeps your, your noodle going when you're riding. For your own sanity, I've turned uh, the speed up on this. Going up Alp de Zwift, obviously this could be a slow one to commentate over. This is me going up Alp de Zwift using steering with the Elite Riser. You can see, so the front of my bike is going up with the course, obviously, on here. 
I'm also able to steer around riders. Particularly when you're coming off the Alp, you can really carve the corners and make up time. And also has been proved previously, through steering up the Alp, you can save time as well. Now obviously that's on Zwift. On other platforms like RGT, for example, it still goes up and my whoosh, it still goes down. You don't get the steering. We understand that could change soon. So that's that's on that one. Now you might be thinking, what about kick a climb? Kick a climb goes up, kick a climb goes down, doesn't steer. So if you're on Zwift, you get up and down and you get steering, which particularly good. People, fantastic. And that means you uh, have the benefit of having some money spare to spend over Christmas or beyond um, on one of uh, the many occasions you walk to the bike shop and you're fortunate enough that they've got one of these elite risers in stock. It's like anything else, there's a global shortage, so you might be desperate for one of these, but you might have to search around. Now, so, as luckily enough, we've got one, and I've got one for quite a while. So, I've tested it like mad, and say it's, it's really interesting, it makes turbo training far more interesting. So, what I'm going to do now is just take you through some of the stuff you need to know when you're using a riser uh, and setting it up for your bike and using it on the different platforms. What I'm doing here is using an Apple TV to record this and I will go over this process all over again. I connected all my devices, which is the riser, smart trainer, heart rate, selecting a course which is appropriate for the immersive experience of the riser. Um, and, and this is just generally going on and showing you what it does. Fatal mistake here. I chose Richmond. Never, ever, ever choose Richmond for your own sanity and mental health let alone using an elite riser. For goodness sake, please, Wiff, give us another course that's more interesting. Oh, yes, I know, Neokio, that's a good idea. Yes, a great course. Anyway, so um, that was that was a very, very speedy way of showing you how to set up the riser on your machine, too, probably too quick. So let's go through that again. So when you log in, make sure on your Zwift companion, if you're connecting with the Swift companion, particularly if you're using an Apple TV, which we are, you switch off mobile uh, connectivity on your phone. On an iPhone, swipe down, keep it off, keep your Wi-Fi on, obviously, and that stops any conflicts. That means you can connect, as we're doing here, multiple devices as they're being limited. So you've got heart rate, turbo trainer, all that sort of stuff. The Elite Riser allows you, uh, either using the app, which I recommend keeping the app on, that's the Elite Riser app. And also, uh, manually, you can switch from being controlled by the smart trainer and obviously the software like Zwift by putting your trainer difficulty on 100 for getting the 100% effect and a proportion of, therefore, if you choose, put your slider anywhere else. So what we can do here is in manual mode is send your machine up and down on its own. Or, depending on the course, it'll do it for you. For example, if you've got a 20% ramp, it will go up by 20%. If you're going down by 10%, it will go minus 10%. Or if you just want to set it on 10% or plus 20%, you can do. And it will just do that. So it gives you total flexibility. Why, you might be asking, would you do that? It just depends what you're training. Perhaps you're training for hill climbing and you want to be just out the saddle honking on something like this. And that's exactly what you can do. So it isn't the machine dictating to you over what slope you should have. You have that control, whether controlled by the software or controlled by you manually. Here it is in operation, in sim mode, in other words, by being controlled by Zwift as I'm pedaling along. And some other things I'd say about this is sprinting as well. Don't do a sprint demo on here, but it makes sprinting, makes you think about it a bit more. For example, if you were sprinting on a Watt bike Atom, those of you who use one, you know it's as solid as anything, amazing for sprinting on. With this, there's more finesse needed because your front moves about a bit because of the steering, because of the steering effect. It'll move about as you're really honking uh, in a sprint. So you'll have to think about that and be more stable on your bike. And that in itself, I think, is a great thing. So you're thinking more all the time, which is important. It isn't just all about watts. So this is just more example of me just messing about with the controls using the map. Uh, so the map app manually and then a few more as well just moving it about and you can see me on a particularly flat course there which isn't a great demo for the front of the machine more demos about setting up again so we connected using the um, gaming machine as well um, using my gaming machine use a blue tooth dongle to get the riser connected seems to work that way best but that's just my way of doing it uh, and there you go whatopia can't be whatopia not Tempest Fuji, something like Sand and Sequilas, something like that. 
is a great course to do it on. And remember what I said, depends on where you put your slider. If you have your slider fully across, you'll get the full effect of the riser. If you move your slider down, you'll get no effect. And there I am moving the slider up. And that's exactly how you use it. Absolutely great piece of kit. Um, £850, yes, but a lot of fun also. If you can't afford £850, I can think of a lot of amazing things you can do with £850 um, with, with your money. If you've got those out of the way first, then this is a nice thing to treat as a toy. In summary, without having to look at my ugly mug again, what do I think about the riser? I think it's very good. I think it's very good once you have bought a really good smart trainer. And if you're going to use the riser with a really good smart trainer, it makes sense to me to get a really good elite smart trainer. It's one of the modern models that will work with it. Now, I would suggest, which you've got there out of the way and you've got everything else you need and you want real good fun riding indoors and don't want it to be boring and perhaps indoor training has lost its spark, then the Elite Riser is for you. You might look at the Kicker Climb. Kicker Climb is belt driven, not bolt like this. This is more robust. And also, it steers. Lastly, shall we say you're one of the more robust riders. This takes up to 120 kilos of rider, including clothing weight. So look out for that one. And uh, all of the stats will be in our article and on the Elite website. In the interest of balance, what I'm showing you here is RGT cycling. And this is me on the riser. Obviously, this is my avatar on a course on RGT, the Pienza course, and me on my riser. Um, all working very beautifully. Clearly, it doesn't steer on this course, but the only reason I put this on here is just to show you, you know, if you're stuck in a Zwift rut and you want to try something different, RGT is there, as are all the other platforms. So thank you very much for watching. Do appreciate it. Lots more info on the Titanium Geek website, where we'll take a deeper dive into all the stats on this Elite Riser. Thanks for watching. Bye. Geek video. I'm Dave. Hi, it's Dave here at Titanium Geek. Currently testing, I've had been for some while, the Elite Riser. 